Good evening. Welcome to another edition of the Guyana Learning Channel's News in Capsule for Wednesday, December 1, 2021. Our headlines tonight. Particle residents receive land titles after years of waiting. And GNBS Madia Office commissioned. In the world of sports, St. Kitts and Nevis to host ICC tournament in 2022. And regionally, CDC warns Americans not to travel to Trinidad and Tobago. On the international scene, Honduras votes in first female president. And with the details, I am Dinelli Singh. Thank you for joining us. Several residents of Bartica Region 7, Kayuni Mazarin, on Monday received their certificates of titles for lands they have been occupying for many years. The titled documents were handed over by Minister of Housing and Water Colin Kroll during a Central Housing and Planning Authority housing exercise held at the Bartica Community Centre ground. While providing an update on the government's national housing programme, Minister Kroll said the ministry plans to roll out a massive housing initiative in Bartica in 2022. He said efforts are ongoing to acquire lands for house lots, allocations and the construction of homes. Additionally, efforts are underway to establish a regional housing office in Bartica in 2022. The building will also house the Guyana Water Incorporated's office to provide improved services to the residents of Bartica. Technical staff of the CHPA were also on the ground addressing other issues including new and existing housing applications and boundary issues. This piece was extracted from the Department of Public Information. Minister of Tourism, Industry and Commerce Onage Walren on Tuesday officially commissioned the Guyana National Bureau of Standards new sub-office located in the township of Madia. The office will, among other things, conduct verification of all measuring devices relative to trade, screen the 17 categories of products monitored by the GNBS and calibrate all high accuracy balances used in the gold industry. Minister Walren said the opening of the facility is aligned with the vision of His Excellency Dr. Mohammed Irfan Ali to link Guyana geographically and extend beyond bridging racial divide. She underscored that if local businesses are to compete globally, then standards must be enshrined into their operations. In April, the GNBS hired an inspector from the region who has undergone extensive training in Georgetown to provide effective service to residents in the district. Minister Wallen believes that the training will yield great results. Further, she noted that the Pataro Siparuni has tremendous potential for tourism and business expansion. Meanwhile, GNBS's acting executive director, Ramrati Karan, said the vision of the agency is to be the premier national institution for standards and quality. To this end, she stated that it is important to have a physical presence nationwide. In recent years, inspectors of the agency would travel to Region 8 to perform duties. However, due to COVID-19, traveling was restricted. The GNBS also saw an increase in bulk fuel in the region, which required a wider use of measuring devices. This piece was extracted from the Department of Public Information. And now in the world of sports. St. Kitts and Nevis will welcome cricket back to the island with the hosting of the ICC Under-19 Men's Cricket Tournament from the 15th to the 22nd of January, 2022. This, the 14th hosting of the tournament, is the first time the event will be held in the West Indies and the home team will be hoping for their second win. The tournament will feature 16 teams playing 48 matches in 22 days. This will mean that there will be up to four matches each day in host countries across 21 venues. The tournament will be hosted in four countries, St. Kitts and Nevis, Antigua and Barbuda, Trinidad and Tobago and Guyana with 10 venues hosting regionally. For the tournament, St. Kitts and Nevis will host teams such as Pakistan, Afghanistan, Zimbabwe, Papua New Guinea, Bangladesh, England, Canada, United Arab Emirates, Australia, Sri Lanka, Scotland, and the West Indies. Matches in St. Kitts will be played from January 15th to 22nd, with the final match being played on January 22nd between Bangladesh and the UAE at Warner Park Cricket Stadium. West Indies will play their first match in St. Kitts on January 17th against Scotland. This piece was extracted from Loop News Caribbean. 
and that for news in the region. The U.S. Centers for Disease Control, CDC, is warning Americans against travel to Trinidad and Tobago. On Tuesday, the CDC placed Trinidad and Tobago in its Level 4 Very High category, which advises U.S. citizens to not travel to countries listed or to ensure they are fully vaccinated if they must travel to those countries. The CDC warned, however, that because of the current situation in Trinidad and Tobago, even fully vaccinated travelers may be at risk for getting and spreading the COVID-19 variants. Trinidad and Tobago, which was previously at level three, joins a number of Caribbean countries that have been added to the level four list over the last few months, including Barbados, St. Kitts and Nevis, Dominica, Cayman Islands, and St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Bermuda and Guyana were dropped to level three, while the British Virgin Islands dropped to level one. The CDC's warning comes as Trinidad and Tobago is experiencing a spike in COVID cases due to the Delta variant. There are no recorded cases of the new Omicron variant that have been detected in other countries in Europe and Canada. This piece was extracted from Loop News. And now on the international scene. Honduras looks to set elect its first female president, Zayomara Castro, after the ruling party conceded defeat. Ms. Castro, the candidate for the left-wing Liberty Free Party, has a preliminary lead of almost 20% points over her rival. Her victory will bring an end to the 12-year reign of the right-wing National Party, which has been plagued by scandals and corruption accusations. Ms. Castro will replace the divisive president, Juan Orlando Hernandez. Ms. Castro has promised to pull Honduras out of the abyss of a narcotic dictatorship and corruption. Her husband, Manuel Zelaya, ruled the country from 2006 to 2009, when he was ousted by a coup. She ran for office twice before in the years following his removal from power. The former first lady has promised big changes after taking office. This piece was extracted from the BBC. That's it for tonight's edition of News in Capsule. Join us again tomorrow for more educational news and updates right here on the Guyana Learning Channel. On behalf of the technical team, thanks for tuning in. And remember to follow our Facebook and YouTube page for educational content around the clock. Stay safe, Guyana. Yeah.